Before we begin having a look in this weird and wonderful world of complex numbers, we started thinking of them, as the name suggests, just as numbers. You can add, subtract, multiply, divide, take square roots, all the usual things you can do with numbers, and that was great. But we learned very quickly that if we take these numbers and being that they, they have two dimensions, right? They have this real part and this imaginary part. We can represent them. We can think of them differently, right? And every time you look at something from a new angle um, or represent something in a new way, you gain new bonus ideas, right? So for example, when we went into uh, mod art form, right? Um, Demarmerson told us there's just this very easy relationship that happens when you raise to a power. You're just adding angles and going round and round and round. And it's so simple to think about. Whereas, if I asked you to do this, and all you were equipped with was a Cartesian representation, um, you would be sitting there for a while, even with binomial theorem, okay? It's just so much more elegant to do it in mod art form. So, now we're going to look at yet another way. Like, complex numbers are just so versatile. Get another way of representing them, which again will give us all these extra bonus sort of insights that we'll get. Okay? So, complex numbers as vectors. Let's get a, a definition on the board. What's a vector? A vector is. Yes. <laughs> I was so excited. <laughs> Me too. Both Matthews and Dirk. Okay, so again, two key ideas, right? Uh, when we were having a look at x plus i, y, it was just horizontal and vertical, right? Horizontal and vertical. When we talked about um, mod arg form, we were talking about modulus, size, distance from the origin, and an angle, right? This idea that we're about to write down magnitude and direction is very, very similar. Like, it almost feels like the same thing. Magnitude, what that corresponds to is it's very similar to this idea of modulus, right? It's like, how big is this number? Modulus. Right? That's what it's related to. And direction, clearly, is what arguments and angles are about. Okay? But there is a subtle difference. And let me try and illustrate it. Yeah. Still the complex point. Yep. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Old habits die hard. Thank you. Okay, so we've got real A and magnitude. Okay. <clears throat> now, if we think about magnitude and direction, what we're really trying to think about is, rather than complex numbers as a point, like here it is, right? Not so much geometrically the point, but geometrically the interval from one point to another. Okay? The interval from one point to another. Okay? Now, we would usually call this guy Z1, right? And in fact, I, I will call him Z1 in a second. But if I want an interval, right? I need two points, right? It's like a start and an end, okay? So therefore, I'm not just going to call this Z1, I'm going to give it a name, just like the names we have for all the other points in the past, like a capital letter. Okay, so I'll call this one, because it's my first one, I'll call it A, <coughs> but what it represents is my complex number. Uh, in this case, I need two of them, so we'll call this one Z1, as is our convention. Okay. So, now have a look at this, right, before we talk about this second guy here. In this case here, if I were talking about intervals, intervals, I could say OA equals AO, right? Because they're the same interval just looked at from two different sides. I start somewhere, I end somewhere, but I end up with the same set of points in between, right? But if you think in terms of direction, direction, and now I'm writing vectors to indicate I'm going from one to another, right? These things are not the same, right? Starting from O and going to A is quite different. In fact, it's literally the opposite of going from A to O. Okay? So to indicate that, right, uh, this is with like intervals, but I would say O, A, and I would put a line with an arrow over the top to indicate vector, direction. I'm going somewhere and direction really matters. In this case, it's not equal to A, O. Okay? So what have I got here? I've got this vector hanging off here. But what's really important, right, is the magnitude is the length of that. That's fine. The direction is, well, I'm going to add an arrow in now that indicates that way. Okay. Don't draw this just yet. We're going to have a, a few more diagrams to draw on. But if I were to draw, if I were to draw this same interval and an arrow like this, right? Or like this, or like this, do you see 
that all three of these new vectors that I've drawn, you know, within reason, sorry, you know, get, just give me better for that, okay? Um, they're all the same magnitude and more or less the same direction. In fact, these vectors are all the same vector, okay? Yeah? How can you express an imaginary number? It's just like off the, off the, like it doesn't have to start from the origin. Yeah, okay, now here's the whole point, right? Uh, point. If I'm thinking of, back in terms of modulus and argument, right? I am literally, by definition, measuring from here, and then you go a distance, and then I measure from here, and you go up an angle, okay? But a vector is not about modulus and argument, despite how closely related those ideas are. He's about, well, how, how long are you gonna, how far are you gonna take me away, and which way do you wanna take me, right? And they don't care about where you begin, or, well, yeah, they, because they don't care about where you begin, there's not a positive real axis that you're measuring from, and there's no origin that you begin from, they're all the same vector. Now we do distinguish between them, and I'll introduce some language to show you that, but just this idea of t focusing on the actual interval as opposed to focusing on the point, that's the key difference between thinking of them as, as vectors or as points on a plane, okay? All right, so magnitude and direction. There's A, Z1. Let's put, um, let's put Z2 on here, and again, because I want to have some language that borrows my language of points, I'm going to call it B. Very unreadable. <laughs> Okay, now, if B is up here, then OB would be this vector. Okay. Now, borrowing what you already know about um, complex numbers and how you add them and what that means geometrically. Okay. For instance, just as a first example, where would Z1 plus Z2, where would it be on this diagram? Okay. Now, with our parallelogram law, right, parallelogram. in fact, I'm even going to draw a parallelogram one here. What I'm going to do is, now that I have this vector language, let me get these guys out of the way. I can take this OA vector, OA, and if I move it up here, like so, reposition it, okay, then adding these two complex numbers together is the same as stringing two vectors together. Can I say that again? That's important. Adding these two complex numbers together is the same as doing one vector and stringing it together with another one, right? It's like step one, step two. Or because addition is still commutative, right? I can do step two and then step one. I'm still gonna get there, okay? So I've got this new point up here, which means I have a new vector. Okay, so color, color. Oh, where's blue? Where's blue? Oh, of course. There you go. Alright, so. Okay, so what I've got in blue there, if we call this point C, okay, the vector OC that represents the vector Z1 plus Z2. Right? Um, no, I'll stay with that. Okay. So let's formalize some of this, and I'm going to give you some new language for it. Um, I'm going to say OC, and I'm going to put that line over the top to indicate it's a vector, it's got a direction, right? Because OC is from the origin, okay, it's from the origin, it gives me the position over here. So it's called the position vector, right? It's the position vector of Z1 plus Z2, right? <coughs> Excuse me. In addition to that, remember we said, ah, oh, you know, you've got um, this parallelogram happening here, right? O, A, C, B. So immediately, like, what is this blue, blue shape? It's a diagonal of this parallelogram, right? So I can say the magnitude of this vector here, right? And that vector represents Z1 plus Z2, right? So I can still use my, my same modulus notation because it's referring to the same numbers, right? The same values. That is the length of... <coughs> It's the length of this diagonal of the parallelogram, right? 